So let's talk about these David photos. I shot 240 photos in my bedroom on a cloudy day using my 5D4 and a 40 millimeter pancake lens. Luckily, my walls are white, so there wasn't a lot of noisy background information compared to my driveway. I just put them on a stack of books in the middle of my room. This was the first successful thing I actually made a model of. In the video about my red, I alluded to not knowing what I was doing. I guess I kind of shot myself in the foot there. I did look up ideal settings for doing this stuff and wanted to do a more detailed walkthrough here. So let's open up Metashape, and first things first, let's make sure our GPUs are turned on. Then let's right click that chunk and add photos. For just importing CR2s uh, directly, you're going to have to change the file type to all files. I filmed this part of the video after the fact, but wanted to show an optional step here. You can go into view and click photos, and then right click your photos and estimate image quality. Metashape will try to decide which photos are good and which don't have enough feature points to create a solid object. You can click here and check out the details, and then sort by quality. I read that you're supposed to get rid of any photos with a quality under 0.4. I actually left all of the images, even though there were quite a few under that mark, and I ended up with a pretty decent model here. And over here, you can actually see the settings I used on my camera. Kind of a high ISO, but you know I wanted to limit shutter drag and uh, you know, stop down as much as I could. After importing the photos, we're going to right click the chunk, process, and align photos. Like I said, after looking some stuff up, these are those ideal settings. I believe this only took like 10 or 15 minutes. Metashape might tell you that some photos didn't align properly. I think you're supposed to just delete any photos that don't align correctly here. Uh, and then you can right click the chunk and hit optimize cameras and that's supposed to help. I've never really ran into that issue, but you might. So here's that sparse point cloud. You can turn off the cameras here, and if you right click, you can recenter your object with that ball in the middle. Um, so then we can just click and drag that ball around to rotate everything. Let's go over top and circle select our object. We'll invert the selection and delete the extra points. Then let's just clean up any extra floating points. Luckily, there weren't too many here because I shot this in a decent environment. There are also ways to clean up points without selecting and deleting them uh, manually. You can mess with some parameters that get rid of points that are less likely to be the object. I haven't done that yet, but it's something worth looking into. Now let's build that dense cloud. I can't exactly remember how long this took, maybe 30 or 45 minutes. Again, you can choose whatever quality you want, but for depth filtering, I'd use aggressive. Um, you know, the higher quality, obviously, the more accurate things you get. So here's that dense cloud. We can see some of the noise here. You know, we're, we're gonna wanna go through and delete all the points that aren't our object. I actually go and mess with that bounding box here. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to do that before you build the dense cloud. And, you know, I'm not really actually positive why you need to do this if I'm going to have to go in and, and clean things up anyway. I think it's supposed to minimize that process, um, but that really hasn't taken too crazy long for me, so I don't mind it. Now let's build the mesh with these settings. Again, you can change your face count to whatever you want. I don't think this took too long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes on medium. And here we have our model. You can see I didn't shoot the bottom of my object. Well, I actually got rid of the lower half, um, but that didn't bother me too much because I figured I was never going to have an angle where you would notice that. In the description, I'll talk about shooting the bottom and aligning and merging chunks. I haven't had a lot of success there, but that's something to look into for sure. You know, having the whole object is pretty important here. This is also where you can export the model and clean any of those areas up. You know, smoothing out anything that isn't accurate to our model. Having an accurate model is important so that when we build our texture, Metashape wraps our images around our object in the correct places. Now let's build our texture. I use these settings. Um, this will give me a 4K texture. You can do an 8K, 16K. This is just what I did here. I'd suggest enable hole filling. And here's our textured model. I built most of this uh, on medium settings and actually felt pretty good about how this looks. You know, this really wasn't the best thing to shoot. It's just an all white statue. So it doesn't really do this justice, but you get the idea. You know, that's why I shot my red to get something a little bit more impressive going on. You know, I, I find this software pretty amazing, right? Like being able to build accurate models with photos, you know, just photogrammetry in general is, is really awesome. You know, I, I would never attempt to model something like my red uh, or honestly, even the statue. It's just not something I do. So having software like this that can give me a flexible and dynamic object that I can create photos with through things like Blender is, is so cool. You know, this model isn't perfect, but it wouldn't take much work to make it even better. 
um, with some basic sculpting in a program like Blender or ZBrush or you know whatever 3D program you want really. From here we can export our model as an object and I just exported the texture here as a JPEG. I think this actually resulted in a less flexible file so I'd actually uh, recommend using a TIFF. And then from here on out, I'm just using Blender to light and render a scene. You know, I'm no expert here, so I'd suggest looking some basic things up if I don't talk about them. Um, but if you know Blender or how to do 3D stuff, you know, at least now you have your model and, and you can do some cool things. If you don't, uh, from here on is going to basically be like a basic Blender kind of tutorial. We're going to open up a general uh, uh, project here, select everything, click X to delete it all, and then we go to File import and we're going to import our object. This might take a second and there it is. I don't know why it goes way over there but let's click them and then let's set our origin and uh, actually set the geometry to the origin so he's just kind of right there in the middle. Then let's click this transform tool and kind of move him up uh, or, you know move your object up onto the plane. It's not totally necessary but it's kind of nice for me. So over here, all of these spheres, like I kind of talked about in that other video, this is how you're going to look at your, your object. These are the different viewports here. Um, you know, the, here's our wireframe. It's kind of cool to tool around. And then in these other viewports, you know, you can actually go into those tabs on top, go into modeling, go into sculpting and do some stuff. I haven't messed with that yet. You know, I, I relied on Metashape to give me the best model so that I didn't have to touch that. Um, so one of the first things we're going to do here is change that render engine to cycles. And if you have a GPU, definitely turn that on here. I have an Apple MacBook, so I can't do that, at least with Blender. Let's add an area light. And then let's move that over here. And you see how that's pointing straight down? Uh, it's kind of annoying to point that at, at our object all the time. So let's click here and add an object constraint. And then let's track that to our object. And then, you know, you, you see that blue line, that's that's where it's supposed to go. Um, so let's, on that 2, let's hit minus Z, and on up, hit Y. And there. So now anywhere we move this light, or your camera, or whatever you do this to, um, this, will, this will track that to whatever object you track it to, which I find pretty nice. Let's go into the light properties here and make this bigger, and then turn the power up. And here, we don't see anything happening yet. I'll explain that in a second. But let's go over to this render view. And then let's go to our world and change that background. Um, I guess this isn't totally necessary, but I wanted him in a black environment. And so this is that render view. Um, and you know, in here, you can turn off all this stuff. As I kind of mentioned before, just kind of tool around, see what does what. I enjoy actually having the extras and the floor on and those relationship lines so I can see my lights and, and what's happening here. Also, since I'm in a black environment, I kind of have to click and, and find that light here. So you can just go over here to the right and, and click whatever you're, you're trying to find. So I want to move this light into a nice spot for a rendered image here. So then let's go in here and add a camera. And I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to add that object constraint and track that to my object here. Right, so however I move this, it's looking right at David. Sometimes it's actually not desirable because, you know, what if I want him on like the left side of the frame? I actually have to take that tracking off uh, to kind of move that around. But in general, I enjoy doing this. It's, it's nice and quick. Then we can actually click our camera here and then click G and then click and kind of drag around to fine tune where we want um, our camera angle. So let's go over here to our output settings and change our dimensions. Then let's go and change our camera angle. I want him all the way in here and then I'm going to press G again and kind of move this around and fine tune where I actually want that. And then another note here, you see how it gets kind of choppy and pixelated as I move around in this view? Let's go over to this view, right? But my lights and the scene aren't actually rendered here. So let's go and turn that on. So we're going to see a better example in a little bit on how this is uh, actually where I usually light things and move my camera around. I find it to be a better way of doing things. Let's go over here into our render settings and change this integrator to branched path tracing and then let's up our sample steps. I'm also going to go in here and add some denoising. I'm just going to use two pixels. 
and then I'm just making sure that I'm in slot one here and then I'm going to render this image and in the top left here it actually shows you remaining time and so this took about seven minutes again I'm on a 2019 MacBook Pro doing this on my CPU and then I'm going to go over here and actually save this image because it's actually not saved yet we can change the file name and then I've actually just been doing 16-bit TIFFs um, with no compression because normally I go in and actually do some more editing in Lightroom or Photoshop. Cool, so that's our first image. Let's go in and find a different camera angle here. Let's get really close. Another thing I like to do here um, is just find a camera angle myself here rather than moving the camera and then I go to View, Align View, and then I align the active camera to my view. It's just an easier way to move the camera and I've enjoyed that. Then we can go in here and change that focal length. You know, as a photographer, it's nice that as the closer I get and the wider focal lengths that I use, this actually gets, um, you know, more distorted and warped. We can also do things like use depth of field. Um, you know, we can pull that focus towards us and, and that's kind of a cool thing to do. Again, as a photographer, that stuff's really nice as far as rendering photorealistic stuff. It just makes everything feel really natural and, and right. Another kind of fun thing here to do is let's let's add some haze. So let's create a cube and then click S and move that out to scale it up. Then we're going to go to this view and we're going to turn on X-ray so we can see how this is all oriented. I'm just going to move that cube up to kind of center it. And then we're going to go down here to the material properties and add a new one and then change the surface to volume scatter. So nothing's happened yet. Um, but if we go over to this view, we'll notice that the cube is turned black. So let's go up to this shading tab up top here. And if we just scroll around and find those nodes, let's change this volume from surface to volume. Basically, that's scattering the surface, and we don't want that. We actually want the volume to be scattered. We can go back to layout here and see we kind of have a, a really densely hazy thing going on here. Let's open that volume tab, and then we can change the density. Um, let's make it a lot lower. Let's make it like 0.1 still pretty heavy so let's change it to like 0 0.05 here then we can go into our camera angle and well that's not a good angle <laughs> let's scoot back here and find a new angle and then align the camera to our view and oh yeah let's turn that depth of field off I actually rendered some images early on uh, with the depth of field on and I didn't realize that it was slightly not sharp um, it was it was pretty confusing so let's render this out using the exact same settings the only difference here being the haze and we can see up there in the top left corner that this is going to take 20 minutes. Um, you know, if you end up doing a render that's like super long and you want to bail, you can just X out of it and that stops the render. So I want to show you something here, um, the difference between these two viewports that I was talking about earlier. So let's add another light here and then go into this view. And see as we move around, it, it's almost impossible to tell what's going on. Um, but then in this view, you can actually see stuff. Uh, let's actually change our world to be what's happening. This is just a, a much nicer way to actually see, you know, in like real time what's happening as you move objects and as you move lights rather than this view where it's just all kind of mush. And, you know, as I move lights around, it's just it can't render that in real time, at least on my computer, maybe on your computer it will. You know, I've kind of found that to be a good way of doing things, kind of lighting in that other viewport and then checking to see what it actually might look like over here. So real quick, I just wanted to talk about those render sample steps. Um, so in this image, I actually rendered out one with 128 steps, and you can see how noisy that is down there. This one is 256, and then this one is 512 with some denoising on. This is actually one of the images I left that depth of field on, and you can tell it's soft, um, which was kind of annoying. But, you know, just kind of mess with those sample steps. You know, the higher, the less noisy it's going to be, but it's also going to take a lot longer to render. You know, you can also do some cool things uh, like add hair, and this was just a super easy tutorial I looked up, just adding hair to objects. I also wanted to see what the difference between EV and cycles really was. So on the left here is EV, and on the right is cycles. This wasn't a great example. I should have done this with like haze. Um, but, you know, ideally, the, using cycles will give you photorealistic stuff. So, you know, for my applications, that's what I want to use. Here's an example where I turned a bunch of lights off and rendered it, and it actually rendered with all of them on. Um, you know, there's ways to render this with those lights actually hidden. You know, you can do some fun things like add objects and make them emissive surfaces. Um, you know, and 
at the end of the day, we're just applying the photos that are our texture. Um, and that doesn't have to be the case. You know, I can change the texture to anything. And so here I changed that to glass. Again, super easy tutorials to look up, um, nothing too complicated. But yeah, you know, just go mess around in Blender or whatever 3D program you're using. Um, this stuff's not complicated. I haven't talked about it yet, but eventually, you know, I want to render out videos, you know, adding camera paths, rotating the object, zooming in and whatnot. Um, so I'm not just rendering out photos, uh, but maybe like moving the lights around and rendering out, you know, 10 seconds here and there. That'll take longer to render, but that's something I'm definitely interested in doing. That's kind of it here. So thanks for watching.